It's Chelsea. It's Nina. And, and you're, you're in the, the Critics' Kingdom. Kingdom. Hello! This week we are reviewing one of my favorite decoms of all time by Miles. For real though. Uh, you might remember the great rallying call that we were all brought to from it. Si se puede. Si se puede. Yes, I can. From the legendary, the phenomenal, gotta kick it up. Exclamation point. Exclamation point. For sure. There should be more. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be real. Um, this movie actually came out in 2002. So, not a super early decom, but like right in that like sweet spot. I think we've, we've said that we have the theory that like I think decoms was... The peak was, like, 98 to, like, what did you say, 05? Yeah, I'd say somewhere in there. Yeah. So this was, like, right in that, like, like Disney was on a roll <laughs> at this point. Like, it was just, like, they were hitting us every month or every other month with, mm-hmm. like, a new great film. And they were, and they felt, I'm not going to say they were great. We haven't been through enough of them to know that, but they felt great. Yeah, like, or at least, like, if you, read, this... if you read me a list of everything that came out, like, during that time, I've probably seen it at least a couple times. Yeah, and this <laughs> definitely felt, this felt great. I'm going to just tell y'all right now, it still is great. Yes. Uh, it's a masterpiece, and I'm so excited to talk about it today. Yeah, no, we're both really excited. So just to get into like a quick recap, we know most people, you probably have a pretty good grasp on this <laughs> one, because again, like Smart House, it's a pretty big one that most people know yeah, it's um, or are still familiar with. So it starts out with this junior high school dance team. Um, they get this girl named, uh, they get this girl named Daisy, who is like our, one of our main characters. And she is trying to get out of having um, detention. So she like cons her way into being on the school dance team that one of her other like acquaintances it seems her, be- it seems her best friend i think her and yoli are best friends no i'm in esmeralda her and esmeralda are not oh because Esmeral- okay. i'm gonna yeah, say like yeah because yeah. yoli wants to be on it yeah yoli wants to be on but it but esmeralda, esmeralda had conned yeah. this new teacher into <laughs> teaching it um and they her and daisy are like acquaintances at best <laughs> Um, but they're cool, but they're not, like, yeah, friends. Yeah, I mean, like, they all grew up in the same, like, in the same schools, like, same right. schools. Right. So, same yeah, school. it's like, they yeah. know each other. Um, but Daisy and Yoli are, like, the best friends, and Yoli is the amazing Mar- America Ferrera, the first time I'd ever seen her. Like, thank you so much for doing this. Thank you so much for entering our lives. Yes. <laughs> um, As in the this green way. Yoli, Miss Yolanda. Uh, I felt so seen in this film. Yes. Um, so, Esmeralda has conned the new biology teacher, Mrs. Bartlett, um into becoming the dance teacher for the ninth grade dance squad um and mrs bartlett doesn't want to do it but she gets talked into it by principal zavala who's like we have to give these kids something to do so they're not on the streets you know the classic he's very morgan freeman lean on me it is very <laughs> you you know exactly where that speech is gonna end so they're not on She's out doing with the gangs and that's also based on a real story i should know the name of that principal i do it not it is but, um, eh, but yes, right. so Principal okay. Zavala and Esmeralda managed to convince Mrs. Bartlett to take over. Um, that's when Daisy sees her chance to get out of detention, and she's like, oh, well, you know I can dance, too. Because that's how I got detention in the first place. <laughs> because she was dancing when Mrs. Bartlett started teaching, <laughs> because they are children, and it was Lord of the Flies, and Mrs. Bartlett was not ready. <laughs> yeah, she was, she was new. She was she's new. Prepared. She was new, and she was green, man, and they could smell it on her. They could. She oh. was not prepared for those middle, mm-hmm. those junior high school students. But they end up, you know, starting the dance team. Mrs. Bartley does audition. It's a really great audition montage. If you don't watch it for anything else, please solely watch the audition montage. It's so much fun <laughs> um, with all the girls showing off their different moves. But Daisy is clearly, like, the one that, like, naturally has it, whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so we also learn that Daisy has a boyfriend named Chewy, who is a recent high school dropout so he's probably like 16 17 and he like drives her around and you know they're cool together he's like working to be a mechanic yeah he works as he's a mechanic and daisy like just basically follows his lead on a lot of things because he's older and obviously he's he's her man so (laughs) (laughs) so that's to be expected um but slowly the dance team becomes more and more important to her and all of the girls they start learning a routine and they even do their first competition um which ends up being okay but not as good as they wanted it to be well they do kind of this is why you kicked in the face like not in the face but they um 
We get a little. Is that the second one? That's the second one. My bad. Yeah, yeah. that's not the. The first one, they they basically like. They just don't win, like, because they weren't at the level yet. They also didn't have the, like, outfits. They were wearing their gym gym uniforms. It was a, you know, they weren't physically or mentally ready. Um, But they're supposed to do another one in another couple weeks. And then Mrs. Bartlett's like, I don't think you guys are ready yet. And they're like, that's according to you, not according to us. (laughs) So they end up defecting from her. And they've practiced at this point, so they have a new routine, and they, like, have got it down good. Um, But they end up going to this other competition um, under her, like, you know, not not without her or the principal or anybody knowing. Yeah, they get driven there by... By Chewie and all of his friends. (laughs) And they're (laughs) lowriders. And they're lowriders. And they're lowriders. And then they deceive the person that's... Letting, yeah, that's that's, the, that's supposed to be regist- letting them in. The registration person. The register. Yeah, they they get in. <laughs> they end up doing well, and then they think like they're. I think they get third place. Yeah. And they're like they're so happy and they're like this is gonna show them that everybody that we're ready like we can do this blah blah blah. And then as soon as they arrive, one of the um other girls that's on the team, Alyssa, her parents who are the only ones who are actively in this film other than Esmeralda's, um, her parents are like, where have y'all been? Like nobody, you didn't you didn't take a bus. I don't see any parents around. There's no where is Mrs. Bartlett? Where is the principal? (laughs) And so they end up having to fess up, and it ends up sparking a moment between Mrs. Bartlett and uh, Daisy, where Mrs. Bartlett tells her like how she's like afraid of failing, and she wanted to like make sure that they were like at the most ready they could be because that's how she's like lived her life. Like she doesn't want to fail. She only wants to be the best at everything. And Daisy kind of, you know, gets some sense into her head that, like, you can't live your life like that. <laughs> Even though she's, like, the teenager in this situation, Mrs. Bartlett is a grown woman. Um, so at that point, Mrs. Bartlett finally starts, like, you know. Coaching them. Coaching them for real. And Not just them an eight team. count. <laughs> which she didn't do before for some strange reason. Well, I really don't understand. Doesn't that make it more difficult? Because the whole idea is that she, like, isn't invested in this. Right. But doesn't that make it more difficult for you if you are trying to teach a routine to a a group of teenage girls right. if they don't know how to with varying dance levels. They don't have an A count? What were you doing? <laughs> were you just trying to <laughs> stick your arm up here <laughs> when you hear this lyric in the song, do this? Like that's just not efficient. Right. So I don't I don't know how that's possible. So they all decide at this point to like band together and they're like, We're gonna figure this out and we're gonna all take this very seriously. Um, and Daisy at this point, like, you know, is like, we, we need to save money so we can actually, or, you know, we need to raise money so we can actually buy like uniforms. And so we can pay to go to the final championship. They don't have the, the school doesn't have the money. Yeah. Cause the school doesn't have the money for them to to do either of those things. They're usually whack. (laughs) They don't (laughs) usually get that. So they do like a car wash and, you know, you end up getting the, the scene where, um, Chewie comes back through because him and Daisy had kind of broken up because he felt like she was taking dance too seriously and he wanted her to be like to like move in with him and like basically for it to in, but well, for like, to... he wanted to be a more mature relationship and she's like I'm a kid because she was 14 years old I'm not trying to settle down and right she now. literally has to say I'm not trying to settle down yeah. and he's only like 16 or 17 so I don't know he's trying to be an adult he also is not ready to be an adult but right. he thinks he is so. he thinks because he dropped out of school and he's working that yeah he's, that, he's that equals got adult. it all together but and he, he has a car, but they like reconcile in this scene, and he shows up with it's him and his homies, and like and they're low riders thirty again. low riders yes. behind him. It's it's wonderful. Yes. Um. And then after that, they end up saving up en- or raising enough money for them to be able to go to these championships for like South Southern California. Um. Perform a amazing routine, and it's a big deal because Daisy is essentially being scouted now. Right. So at the previous, when they were at the other um, championship, which nobody knew about, this woman comes up to her and is like, oh, I'm like, I am a recruiter for the high school of performing arts. We think you'd be great. You know, I'm going to keep my eye on you. So when they go to the fi- the finale, she's there again and she's she sees Daisy before they go on to perform. And she's like, oh, I'm so excited that you're here. And like, you know, I'm really going to like, you have that eye on you, blah, 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 which then causes Daisy to freeze up because... What else do you think is going to happen when you basically are just like, so this is the key between you and future opportunities. Yeah. Right before somebody goes and does something that involves performing. 
Um, so she freezes up initially when they first start the music, but then she gets into it because Yoli screams at her. <laughs> She's like, let's go! <laughs> when they turn around, and then she finally gets back into it. And, you know, the whole dance end up going, go, ends up going very, very well, which also, side note, you probably remember the song Shake Shake and, like, their little dance mix routines, but it is just as much fun now as it was then. Um, we'll post a track list below because it's when we say just as much fun now it is great like we were singing along singing along dancing in our seats i i used to dance when i was little so i actually remembered like whole parts of the routine that i'm capable of doing um and i was unashamed to do them in front of chelsea (laughs) so yes it's 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 exactly as you remember and then it basically ends with them um we don't even know if they place, right? No, they do. They place. They place because then at the end we get the um, because it's based on a true story. True story. Oh we right, get yeah, the we get the continuation. Yeah. What, what do you, you find out that? what happens? The end title. I don't the ends. You know when they like write like here's what actually happened to the <laughs> real a, group that this is based a word on. For that. There you is should a word. Know that. There is a word. I don't know <laughs> um, what it is. But anyway, it says they placed in the regionals. They were able to go to they. And they went to nationals. Yeah. yeah. And I don't think they, I don't know if they place in nationals. I can't remember. Yeah, it didn't, they don't I don't think they said nationals. that. Or do they? Did they place nationals? I can't remember. Y'all should look that up. Let yeah. us know. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to look that up. But, but yeah, so then yeah. all of the, you know, all the girls and Mrs. Bartlett are all knighted and then at the, united and then at the end, you know, they throw up their palms um, <sighs> into the air. And, you know, with that, I think we can get into, like, the review portion of it because there's just so much to talk about in this film. Also, we just love it so much. It's... Because <laughs> there's just so... It's just it's so well done so and so good. good. Like, this, this is, is so much be, fun watching this This is going to be a lot of us gushing, so if you're not comfortable with that, you should just tap out now. Yeah. Because, um, this film... All right, so, like, first and foremost, I will just have to say the production team on this... It seems to have been great. Um, it's specifically a Latinx production team. Not everyone, but key players. Yeah. You know, people that help writers. write the script. And the director was is Latinx. He's not dead. So. <laughs> yeah, he's <laughs> Is, not. actively. Um, and he's, he's actually also the director of Stand and Deliver. Ramon Menendez. Which, to me, suggests a basic level of, you know, care and thoughtfulness mm-hmm. in putting t- the team together to tell this story. So that's just something that, you know, learning down the back end, it just feels good. And it also probably has a lot to do with why the film is as good as it is. Mm-hmm. Why it still resonates the way that it does. Um, or the way that it did for Chelsea and I while we were rewatching it. I think it's also the reason why this didn't turn into a white savior film. So like, if, you, if you look it up... <laughs> yeah. It's like, because if you look it up, like... You, People will say that it's mostly focused on Mrs. Bartlett, and it's really not. It's like, absolutely not. She's true. literally like a she's not a minor character, she's a major character, but like it's really more about the ensemble of Daisy, Yoli, Esmeralda, um, Alyssa, Alyssa, and Marisol. So it, it's like it's mostly about the team themselves and like what they do, um, and how they get to where they're trying to go. And they're like in each of their sort of individual not necessarily, because it's not always a challenge, but just, you know, individual things that they're grappling with or have right. to overcome in various ways to do so. Uh, and, I don't know, there's so much There's so much to talk about. Here. Yeah, I mean, I think we can even start off with the fact that it is, you know, like you were saying, like, it's a, it's an, a true ensemble. Like, it's like, this is, this is one of those movies where there's no real protagonist. Like, it's like, yes, it's Daisy, but it's really Daisy and Yoli and Esmeralda <laughs> and Alyssa, you know, and Mrs. Bartlett. Like, it, it's, like, it's a bunch of people, and they and all even, work so you know, well and together. And Zavala and, and Chewie. And Principal Zavala. Like, they all sort of... They're all sort of getting at the same concept, but from different places. Right. If that makes sense. And it is sort of this basic idea of, you know, like... You know, gotta kick it up, and, you know, si se puede. This idea of, like, we can... We can do well. We can do better. How are we going to do that? Right. What are the best ways for, like, me as an individual to be the best version of me Mm -hmm. as an individual? But also, coupled with that, recognizing that, like, I have to be an individual in a space with others. Mm Mm-hmm. That's, you know, that's basically the larger theme that you can extract from that. And so, like, how do we come together to 
lift up, like lift each other up, play to each of our strengths, um, and do so without you know like stepping on each other. Yeah, no, and I think this is a great film that like just shows it the classic teamwork. Like <laughs> yeah. the teamwork make, Capital makes the team. dream work. Yeah. Like this is this is literally one of those movies where it's just like once everybody got like got their stuff together, including Mrs. Bartlett. Because the coach is also included in those types of things, mm-hmm. which people always forget. <laughs> it's like once everybody got their stuff together, they improved as a whole. You yeah. know, it's like they were all bettering each other too, which it, which was good to see throughout the film. Like even part of the um, one of the like smaller plot lines is that Yoli fails her math class, so then Principal Zavala's like, "Well, your GPA is going to be too low, so we're going to have to kick you off the squad." Yeah. So then right Mrs. before Bar- right, right before, before the national or the regionals, the, the regionals, yeah, the final championship that they perform at um and mrs bartlett has to go to bat for her um and be like okay well maybe she can like count up the money at the car wash and if it's correct we can let her take the math test again and then she or she yeah or it'll count as her or it'll count as extra credit yeah that conversation so she and they all you know and they really support her in doing that um and even and encourage her. And encourage her. There's a there's a thread in it, you know. We could even just go through each of the threads. There's a thread with Esmeralda where her essentially what's broken down is that you know she lives in a family with you know it's her mother, her father, her little brother, and her parents work a lot, and so sort of a lot of sort of the burden of responsibilities of kind of household keeping and in various ways like. It, not just not the idea of just like cleaning, but like of just sort of keeping the house flowing, looking after her little brother, right. making sure he's fed and taken care of and stuff like that, um, has fallen in her lap. And it's a situation of, you know, so she doesn't get a lot of chances to do after school activities and things like that because right. she has responsibilities at home. Uh, in order to make the home work for everybody in there so that, you know, her parents can go out and provide and all of that stuff. And her thread is sort of essentially her getting to a place of being able to stand up for herself to her parents. And not in, and what I love about it is that it's not in a disrespectful way and it's not in a selfish way. It's not in a like, you guys shouldn't be treating me like this. Uh, because I know as when I was a kid, like her situation was something that I understood, that I knew, that I recognized. You know, I have friends who live like that. My cousins like, live like that um and I I never appreciated that in other films it's always sort of seen as a it is that Cinderella idea you know it's seen as like a form of abuse is a strong word but a form of you know like emotional abuse or just like not letting a kid be a kid and all of Mm -hmm. that and it's like well sometimes a lot of times especially in this country that's not an option right for the family to work the way it has to but she does get to a place of being able to like respectfully say to her parents this is kind of the one thing i have so if you guys could help me have this one thing mm-hmm. that would be great and, and her like parents her respond dream. to that yeah and they respond to that they're like yeah you know what you're right and they work through it work around it the whole shebang so like <clears throat> she learns that confidence from her interaction with people like Daisy who are nothing but a rolling rage of ego. Right. Uh, so that's a that's a good little fun one. Yeah, and then even on the like Mrs. Bartlett like thread side. So <laughs> Mrs. Bartlett worked at a dot com company because this came out in two thousand and two. <laughs> um and it busted because again this came out in two thousand and two. <laughs> so now she has become a teacher. Um and uh in in the reason why Esmeralda at first even is like, you need to become our new dance teacher is because Esmeralda is nosy and works in the office, which normally tend to go hand in hand, funny enough. Yep. Um, and so she looks through Mrs. Bartlett's file the moment that Mrs. Bartlett gets hired and she finds out she went to Juilliard. And so that's what it actually spurs Esmeralda to ask Mrs. Bartlett to take over um, the dance team. And we end up finding out when, you know, Daisy and Mrs. Bartlett have their whole heart to heart after the girls go behind her back is that Mrs. Bartlett only went to Juilliard but did not graduate. Um, And we get into this whole greater thing where we find out that she actually has like a deep fear complex and she has a fear of failure 
an imposter syndrome. Like she, she tells Daisy, she's like, I got to Juilliard, realized that there are people 10 times as talented as me, couldn't handle it because I'd never felt that before. And also because she felt like her parents pushed her, pushed her and pushed her and never told her that they were proud of her. Common theme. Common theme of um, the Decom universe. And so she never, so that was their way of making them happy was to go to the school and, and do dance, which what, which is what she was great at at the highest level. And she's like, she couldn't hang because she just felt like a fraud compared to everybody else at Juilliard who she felt was way more talented than she Even was. Even though no one told her that. Yeah, no, she never directly was told that, but so she left and went to a different college. Um, So I think you just have a, you also have something in there where, and I think this is similar to something that you were saying, Nina, where I feel like kids especially, and even when they're like 14, you don't have that sort of fear in you yet. Um, And especially younger ones where it's like, you don't have that, that fear of failure normally has not set in. Like, I feel like that normally sets in the older you get. Yeah. So it's like Daisy and Esmeralda and Yoli, all of them, they don't have that, like, you know, they didn't do well. And one, it was like, okay, but now we move on and we go forward. Yeah. Or there's a try again factor. It's not a, it doesn't paralyze you immediately. And it's like, because that, like, I feel like for a lot of kids, they learn that very early. And especially if you're, uh, child of color (laughs) you learn very early that it's like you're gonna get rejected or you know all of that so you kind of that fear of failure is just it's just different yeah Um, you can't stop living because of that exactly you have to keep moving you can't let it paralyze you and that's what mrs bartlett essentially did and it was a very interesting exploration of that because i think this is from what all the movies we've seen thus far i think this is like the first movie that's like battled that specifically like that imposter syndrome like the feeling of being a fraud from the adult perspective yeah for sure and i think it's and i think you see it a little bit also with you know um like that happens a little bit with chewy as well you see like it coming in on another end with you know by the end what he's essentially able to say daisy is that like it's at, it wasn't about you, it was about me, and it's the fact that I'm, I'm sitting here seeing you do this and do something great, and, mm-hmm. you know, taking something that you have innately and working at it and watching it become fruitful for you, and I couldn't handle that, because when, I, when things got hard for me, I quit. Right. And... You know, and, and you imagine all the feelings that go with that, the not good enough for you, the, the all of this other stuff. Right. But he's essentially, in the same way that, you know, the idea that Daisy and all of these girls, like, their drive to get better at something and to perfect something that they care about, mm-hmm. that they, like, love doing in and of itself, regardless of their prowess at it. So it's it would just be nice if they could also have great skill in it. He too like comes to a place of you know i'm gonna go back to school right i want to do that watching you guys do that has given me an impetus to want to do something of that nature for For myself myself. yeah uh and that's so you see that thread sort of coming through there as well yeah it's like the the idea that people can get very intimidated very easily um which is real like that happens and i feel like it was also good that i think they showed it in happening especially in college um because that's very common. because that's so common like I remember you know just personal anecdote here <laughs> I remember when I was in high school and my dad like straight up used to say for I think like junior and senior year he's like when you go to college you're gonna meet people that are you know not as smart as you are or as smart as you think you are and he's like and then you're gonna meet people that are on the complete other end of the spectrum so he's like it's for a lot of kids that's the first time that they're really in the middle to it or even like have somebody to be in the middle with and I feel like that especially happens with a lot of kids who are like Mrs. Bartlett who have always been seen as the top or the best at whatever they do whether that's academics dancing what what have you yeah and then when you go to that next level and then it's like oh shoot because you even hear about it with like uh sports players like athletes say that all the time like they'll be good in high school and they go to these colleges and they're like, yo, <laughs> like, <laughs> they're like, I thought I was great. Good at, is a relative term. Right. I thought I was good at like random, you know, high school in Wisconsin. And now I'm over here at university of Michigan. And these, mo- these men are over here, six, three and 300 something pounds. 
they'll destroy they will literally kill me but it's like but that happens to most people like and it's i think it's just it's great that they talked about it and then talked through it and then also how it can follow you through the rest of your life if you don't squash it early or like at least are aware like acknowledge it and then try and you know figure out what it is inside yourself that's so deep-seated yeah um and And fix it as you can and on that too i do really i mean it's weird because like you know like it's funny because this does sort of reinforce that whole thing like if you can't do teach right right but not in that particular vein but there is something i think also about the fact that she what's the realization that she comes that bartlett comes to is that she can take this thing that she has like some skill in or some training in and she might not be able to execute it at the level that she considered the best or that was right. told that she was told was the best but that doesn't mean that she can't take what she has and redirect it somewhere else and put that skill set into another place where it's not only just more fitting for the skill set that she has but is more fulfilling for her personally and potentially more beneficial to someone else. More beneficial to, like, the whole of society, therefore, because it's not just helping you, it's helping others as well. Uh, I think that that's a... That's just a nice note in that, and Mm -hmm. I think that that's a nice flipping on the head or a reconsideration of what that phrase, you know, means, that those who can't do teach, or this idea that, you know, if you... If you're not, if you're not the star athlete, if you're not, you know, the president, like, then you have no, like, you were the loser of politics. You were the loser of, Mm -hmm. you know, on the football field. And it's like, or maybe you're just, you you have the skill set that allows for other people to, like, to learn, to learn, Mm -hmm. to explore themselves. You know, like, you're able to build a community. Right. Um, in a way that stardom is not necessarily linked to. Right, and that just might not be the route for you, which is also fine. You know, everybody has their different... And there are a lot more people in the community than there are stars, you know? Yeah. So that's also... Yeah. And know. there's nothing wrong with being either. Because um, we yeah. need people on both sides. Because somebody's got to train the future stars. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I think that is just an important lesson to to get across, and I'm happy that they did it. And then also... Even just a little detail of, like, her, like, not even finishing was, like, a yeah. good one. Because that was when I had forgotten that it was, like, oh, she went, but she, like, didn't finish, you know? Um, so, yeah, I think that was, like, a good one. And then I think you get into the idea of, like, a lot of the, the girls that they're, tra- when Mrs. Bartlett is training them, they have a lot of innate ability, but they're not necessarily, they don't have the technique. Because, like, well, Daisy is a great dance well some of them have innate ability yeah some of them have the not have innate desire yeah you know they would like to have innate ability and or technique either <laughs> would make them happy <laughs> no one really has technique it seems um, yeah i would say that yeah it is that's another you know sort of just age old yeah question where you know where does the true success where does the true genius lie right um i would argue that History has taught us that it's both, um, but, you know, working at something can always make you better. Mm-hmm. Not working at something will never move you anywhere. Unless you're Alan Iverson. Oh, <laughs> damn, Josie! Like, Sorry. You could have told me you were going to do that. I have no... I have so many sports references today. I don't have a defense for I don't know why, but... <laughs> Yeah, oh, okay. Um, <laughs> but he's like the we're gonna only. Have to, we're gonna have to return to that. In another <laughs> he's like episode. the only what one. The hell? Okay. I mean, I guess technically Jay Z. He doesn't write his rhymes, right? <laughs> <laughs> Why are you trying to have everybody sue us? I don't you know. You have to stop. <laughs> no, but all these people have said this. <laughs> this is out there in thirty for thirties and interviews on the YouTube's. Yeah, I know, but but Forbes has lawyers, Chelsea. We do not have lawyers. Nobody's gonna sue us for saying what they've said. Okay. You go ahead with that. <laughs> AI's whole thing is that he doesn't shoot in the gym. <laughs> oh, I do love him so, though. I know. Um, but yeah, no, so many sports references. That's the other <laughs> thing that I like about this is that they treat... I feel like there was also... A, I, I feel like the early 2000s was very much like a boom for cheerleading as a sport, though. Oh, like, for sure. It was like... I feel like that's when... 
I want to say ESPN only really started broadcasting like the the college cheer championships like late 90s I want to say so by this point it was like a norm and like that was just like a thing (laughs) and it's notwithstanding that like bring it on this is bring it on era yeah bring it on era era. like it was this was cheerleading we were cheerleading down honey and so (laughs) they and their dance team they're not technically cheerleaders even though they use palms um but I think I also just want to put out there that, like, this is also a sport. Yeah, but damn, Because dance, people always cheer, try to get cute about cheer and dance. And yes. it's like, that is also a very intense sport. Like, if you and do competitive cheerleading or competitive dancing, that's not easy. Yeah, and it's like and it's like swimming in that way where it's a whole body sport. Yes. Like, you have to be, you know, it's, it's whole body, like, muscle usage, but the, also just, like, the level of strength that you have to have. Yes. But to be able to do things against your own body weight, to be able to hold other people's mm. body weights, mm-hmm. like the amount of flexibility that you need, the stamina that you need to be able to do that while you're smiling the whole damn time. Also, just a real quick note, the, in this film is where I learned for the first time that whole Vaseline on your teeth tidbit. Oh yeah, we'll keep you smiling. <laughs> yeah, and like one of my favorite parts about watching this just like was catching all of those little things. It was like, oh wait. This is where I learned that. Like, this is why we watch Disney Channel original movies. Yes. As adults. Because you're like, oh, this is what taught me this. Or right. this is where I got this little tidbit of knowledge. Um, but, yeah, it is a whole sport. Uh, it is physically grueling. Mm-hmm. And the people who are able to execute in that, like, with that prowess in these sports, they should be, they should be celebrated and lauded. Because it takes so much time and so much work to get there. Oh, yeah. And if you guys want to see, like, a behind-the-scenes docuseries, Cheer on Netflix, which we both watched when it first came out, it, it, it will literally just make you respect it so much if you don't already. Like, cheerleading especially is very, very, both of them, cheerleading and dancing, it is just so much. Like they are true, <laughs> at, like they are true athletes, and I get so tired of people just calling them like they they are always treated like the stepdaughter, like a diminutive of an athlete. Yeah. And like no, they are athletes, and they're athletes who perform, which makes it even more ridiculous. <laughs> like it makes it even more ridiculous. You know, what it's I mean? actually like, insane because you have to do all of that and be able to put on and be able to excite a crowd and be able to do. You know what I mean? Right. Like, nobody's telling Peyton Manning to smile while he's throwing the football. Right. <laughs> that's not something that's With happening. With a full face of makeup and his hair in the tightest ponytail it's ever been in. All the gel. All the gel. <laughs> it's just, all the glitter. Oh, uh, oh. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's a lot but, of work. Yeah, it's a lot of work, man. So just, like, the respect for so that. So shout for out sure. to the cheerleaders and dancers out there. We see you. We do. Y'all work hard. Y'all work hard. But in that vein of just, like, respect and, you know, just... Sh- Shout out to all of, you know, the greatness that exists out there that is not acknowledged or is actively sort of shitted on. Mm -hmm. Um, Like, obviously, we just have to talk about the fact that, you know, that this is, again, like a truly Latinx production. It is. Um, Earlier when I said that whole bit about, you know, feeling seen, I am not Latinx, I'm not of Latinx descent, but, you know, as a child of color, I, when I was a kid, I got excited when I saw anybody that was even a tanned hue on the right. screen. It's like, oh, what is she? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And my favorite game. And what I love, <laughs> my favorite game. My favorite game with my father. <laughs> Ooh, I don't know what she is. What um, is she? That's why I thought Catherine Zeta Jones was Latina for years. That's hilarious. <laughs> that's amazing. Um, but yeah, this film, it especially sort of still tracks in that vein. And I think that it's it's specific, like, you see how important this representation is in the sense that it never mattered to me, and it still doesn't matter to me that this is not technically what, by, you know, what society tells me are the definitions and the, and the boxes. Right. Like, this is not my story, right? right? This is technically not, um, you know, like, I didn't grow up in a dual language house Mm -hmm. same Uh, here anything like that but i deeply identified with you know these girls coming from a place where people are counting them out right away people have already written their futures people have already decided the type of kids that they're gonna the type of adults that they're gonna grow into being you know even the way bartlett gets there like 
the fact that, you know, you can fail at your career and think, okay, I'm going to just go teach in a broke, you know, in a broke neighborhood, in, like in, an a, eth- po- a, in a quote unquote ethnic, ethnic neighborhood or <laughs> broke neighborhood or poor school, whatever you want to put on it. And they're in the, Movie itself, like they talk about how you know when they have to wear their gym uniforms. Yes, yes to the first competition. I forget which one that was like, but only poor schools do that. And the other was like, we are a poor school. <laughs> like, look around it's you. like, girl, what do you think we are? Um, but you know, and, and even the fact that there isn't money in the budget for them to do one more competition because no one expected them to ever get to a point where they would be able to do that because it hasn't happened in the past. Right. Right. It's like, um. But to go back to that real quick, just this idea that, like, you can fail out and go to these schools and, like, that's how you're going to, you know, that's just what you're going to do because you failed at something else. Like, I was just a general note, like, please don't bring that to these children. Yeah. You, like, you and your, fails, your failures and your past lives and, like, all of the, like. They're, like, a last resort. That's, yeah, like, exactly. Educating children should never be a it's last resort. It's never a last resort. It should absolutely extremely never be the last resort in the places that might need the most care and attention. Right. Um, because they're not able to necessarily get it elsewhere, or again, because society has decided to not funnel the appropriate funds, the appropriate care into those, the the places where they live, like, just that whole thread. I'm glad that it exists in this to showcase that it's not okay. And also (laughs) speaking, and speaking of that, when you, like, mentioned, like, that they're not what you would think, uh, I think it's also important to note, like, now, they're all also, like, body-wise, various body shapes. Oh. They're all, like, you know, like, and none Listen, of them are, like, Yoli... super slim. Yoli is, like, a oh. bigger girl. And it's, like, and that's never brought up as, it's like, so a... Well, and, again, America well, they teach just, her, like, in the beginning, but, for, like, like... various roles in which, yeah, you know, like, never forget oh, that moment in Sisterhood Traveling Pants, Real Women Have Curves. Just, like... Baby Nina was very much indebted to building self, like a lot of self esteem came from seeing. Came from, yeah, because it matters street. because it's like it never, you just don't see that yeah, very thick often. Girls don't, you don't thick girls a, don't get that low. You don't see yeah, like a thick girl that's on a dance in like a palm dance squad, like doing professional competitions. So it's and, just like it matters. You and know? weirdly, after this, I feel like that became like a weird, it was then obviously taken and ran with in not a great way, but then it became like a weird trope in Hollywood mm. of like having like the one thick girl on the squad that's like kind of made fun, but she also, you know, she can do what she does. But mm-hmm. it like, it was taken and sort of became it's like a Frankenstein's monster runaway. But in this, that's not really the case. And, and generally in this like sort of on that, the bit, you know, that, just that bit about, like, everybody's a little different, and it's fine, like, mm-hmm. I love with Marisol how, there's, one of my favorite lines in it is when she comes to report to them that she heard that Miss Bartlett might be leaving, and one of them says, like, oh, like, are you sure you heard that, like, maybe you heard something else, and she's like, listen, my English might not be that good, but there is nothing wrong with my ears, <laughs> like, my hearing is totally fine, <laughs> and Yeah, like, just, like, go back to that idea of, like, feeling seen and being able to connect to people who are, in theory, not just like me, but, like, that's not how I felt as a kid. Mm -hmm. Um, As a kid, I I felt that my connection with these girls on the stream was really strong. But even a line like that, like, that's something she said that, and I feel like that's something that, you know, I hear my friends say, and I hear my cousins say, (laughs) and I hear, you know, that's just, like, it's just a a way of logic and, you know, a quickness that you find, I don't know, I do think it develops in a special way that you find, like, that sort of quickness of wit and retort uh, in what some would call urban areas, but in, you know, sort of more minority or, like, ethnically diverse areas than you would, like, in other places in America. Mm -hmm. Um, Just, which I think is rooted in just this ability to adapt uh, and this level of what one might call scrappiness but like you know shout out to Hamilton for like reclaiming that term and you know scrappy's not necessarily a bad thing but this just a this ability to not a like literally not lie down and take it when the world is going to tell you something about who you are mm-hmm. just get up and be like uh-uh, uh-uh. <laughs> actually no I'm like, the only one yeah now. I'm actually the only one who knows who I am and I am the one who defines that, and like, yes, yeah, see, si se puede. Like, I can actually do anything that I want. And you know what, America, you're actually the one who told me that. 
you told me I can be anything I want to be, so you must be crazy now to think that you're going to put boxes and, def- <laughs> and define, like, what's going to be around me and what I'm going to contribute. Like, that's just not how this is going to work. Yeah. And I always appreciated... I feel like that's a sentiment that I got from this when I was a kid, and I still think that sentiment is there, and it's a sentiment that I appreciate exists in a children's programming. Yeah. And it's part of the reason why I love this as much as I do. And I think it just gets into broader, like, broader things about accessibility and, like, who has what opportunities because part of the film ends up becoming that Daisy is about to get this opportunity to go to the School of of the Performing Arts. And, like, that's an opportunity that she wouldn't have been able to have had she not gone on to the dance team. And then you have somebody like Esmeralda who we end up, we learn early that, like, she's clearly wanted to dance all her life. Like, she has a mural on her bedroom that is, like, a ballerina. And I remember when we were talking about it, I'm like, why didn't she just take ballet? And you're like, you know what? They probably couldn't afford it. And it's like, yeah. You know, it's like if you're in this type of, and it's like not to assume, but it's like if you're in, you know, what they put on the screen, it was like you're in like a, let's say, quote unquote, rougher neighborhood. You go to a poorer school. You're a latchkey kid, basically, and take care of your little brother. Like, your parents aren't going to be probably doling out the, the money that would be needed for you to take ballet, which tends to be a lot of money. Yeah. Once you get into all the other stuff. So it's like this was probably her first chance to really be like, I want to do a dance team and I don't, my parents aren't going to have to pay any extra money for yeah. me to do it. Um, so I think you just have like a lot of themes of accessibility in here that were good to highlight as well. Um, and then just how everybody is able to eventually reach what they wanted to reach their goals. Yeah. And it's, and I did like, I kind of touched on it earlier, but I do just want to like reiterate, you know, I do think that, I do think that this film is it exists the way it exists it is because the people that were creating it care you know it's a true story and like i think i think the the dance teacher in real life is one of the writers yeah she was one of the writers but so it's a true story so like there's that level of you know people care to like get it correct but the production team behind it you know there are a lot of people who come from backgrounds similar to mm-hmm. the people that this story is about. And this feels like a great example of what happens when you give people the room to tell their own stories. Right. And you're, you're just like, here's the money. <laughs> here's the you do what, here's the money. It, just what you can. Do, do with it, you know, <laughs> what works. Go forth and be great. And it's just like, it just... You know, like, usually you talk about how something leaves a bad taste in your mouth. It's just, like, this is, like, I don't know, it's like eating ice cream. <laughs> like, watching this film is, like, eating ice cream. It's, like, it's, like, eating, you know, socially, politically correct, you know, wonderful minority representation, mm-hmm. eth- like, diverse, eth- or, like, differing from white America ethnicity celebration ice cream. Um, a flavor that, like, who knew it tasted so good? Actually, probably everybody of color, if you would ask them. Right. I told you that it did. Um, like, I think about the way in which even that rally and cry, which I do think it is a rally and cry, I'm not going to lie and sit here and say that when I first saw Yes, We Can on Obama's posters, I didn't immediately think, oh, see some weather? <laughs> like, yeah, I know that. Um... Like, the fact that that is a rallying cry of a generation and that those are Spanish words. Mm-hmm. In America, this place that's going to try to say, like, oh, you know, come here and speak English. You can't speak any other thing when we don't got no national language. You know? <laughs> like, like I remember watching this little, and, like, when, when I was little, and they add in, when they're doing their final dance sequence, they add in all of the... Some various, like, Latin X dances. To, you know, to... Cause, to melt the culture. Yeah, because Bartlett's like, yeah, you guys like, you guys should put some, or I don't remember who comes up with the idea. I think she's like, I think you guys should add some Something of your own, own your own stuff personal into stuff it. into it, so it's not just my, it's all of ours. It's the right. team's routine, and you know they add in like La Lavador, like the washing machine. Like I remember doing that in the schoolyard with my friends and merengue and cha cha. It's like I was hearing these words. And I was seeing them done on this on these screens, and those are things that have become a part of my culture because of that. 
which is what makes sense and is what's supposed to happen when you are in a country that is made up of immigrants, that is a place where various people have come to call home, that like puts itself out there, that like puts its dream out there as a beacon to the to the lost and the hopeless. Come here and find solace. Come here and dream again. Come here and make something new and shock the world with what you were capable of doing. Shock the world with what we as a ragtime team <laughs> country can create. As a rag team country, not ragtime team country, you know, can create. Um, and I just like deeply, I'm just deeply thankful that this film exists and that the people who made this film took the care to either step back and say, you know what, I'm not going to touch it because this story isn't actually mine, or took the care to say, I'm going to make sure that I have as much control over this as I can because mm-hmm. the story belongs to people who have been through things like me. <laughs> you know, like, I appreciate that that happened on both ends. And I only imagine, like, I can't imagine, like, I feel all of that about this film. I can't imagine what this film is to the Latinx population of America. Yeah. You know, to yeah. all of the kids my age who were Latinx. Like I can't I can't even begin to fathom if this is if it meant so much to me. And it again, yeah, it wasn't technically quote unquote my story. Right. Even though like my parents are immigrants, but English speaking and all you know, all and just so many other things. Like I just can't imagine so like I'm just happy that it exists also for y- you guys and, you know, for everybody that it does resonate even more with. Yeah, no, I completely agree. I think it's a, such an important story that was told and one that was, like, necessary at this point. Um, and, you know, I, I same, I'm not Latinx either, um, but... It, do, it did mean a lot to me. Like, I remember I really, really enjoyed it. Like, I always liked this movie, and I would always watch it whenever it was on Disney Channel because it was just fun, and it was just a group of, like, brown girls getting their, you know, like, doing their thing. And it was like, yeah, this makes sense. Like, <laughs> we need more of this. Um, and I think even afterward, we were, like, discussing, like, there haven't really been in America, um, you know, that many, like, latinx teen like films like this mm-hmm. that we were aware of since this one ensemble in this yeah way like a, like and... a nice big ensemble i don't even know of like a big one starring and like... not rooted in certain you know what i mean like yeah even like true, not rooted like, in even a dropout right yeah there's nothing i mean it's a decom so obviously there's nothing in it about this but like he's a dropout but he's not he's not starving nope he's not you know what i mean like yeah. it's not there aren't gangs in the it's not it's not any of those tropes that you yeah. that come with these yep. types of films usually, right? It's not gangs, it's not drugs. There's no pre- oh, again, decom. You know, it's not <laughs> you know, teenage mothers. It's not it's none of that stuff at all and I don't think that there are examples of that per se that come immediately to the top of my mind. Yeah, you guys uh, want I, to let I, us know. Please let us know if like there if, has been one if there have two. been if there are things that we or and let me also add with this level of popularity. Yeah. Because obviously, you know, there are always niche sort of indie things that exist in those spaces. But right. to this level of popularity where, again, you know, you look up the com review list and this is the top of so many. Yeah. Or top five of so many. Yeah. It, or should be. <laughs> if it's not. Because, again, I don't know who's putting these together. <laughs> I don't want to say that. But the Wikipedia page is way too short. I will yeah, say no, that. Yeah, no, y'all need those. to actually write a real plot. That's not okay. Rude. Um, Disrespectful. But so to get into, you know, kind of tail it off, would you show it to your kids? I, my kids are going to watch this film. My kids are going to love this film because I think that, you know, like, it's hard. I think it's a hard film not to love. It's so fun. But, you know, and in theory, like, my kids are also going to dance, like, you know, boys and girls. Like, I think dance is just a great physical activity generally speaking oh yes and like kids. i love that it's an intersection of physical and creative so like you know all of my children will dance um okay so all listen. my children <laughs> <laughs> listen so sometimes you just gotta make judgment calls you know um but yeah i'm definitely like i'm gonna sit down and i'm gonna watch this with my kids uh 
probably every time. Now I'm going to sit down and watch it when they're not around. They're going to be like, oh, mommy, I'm watching that dance movie that she will stop watching again <laughs> on Disney Channel that's not made for her, but she's still watching. Uh, because I think, again, for like all of for all of the reasons that we said, for both sort of the separated from, um, you know, considerations of class, race, racist, and ethnicity in America, um, all of just those inherent sort of lessons and ruminations that are in the film in terms of content. But then on top of that, because of, you know, race, yeah. <laughs> ethnicity, class in America, and just... Be, you know, just because it's it's a film that I think trend it doesn't transcend that it lives in that and because of it it is because of that particular fact that it does live in that space and it owns that space it therefore becomes a film that is deeply relat- relatable yeah and it becomes a film that it is it would be res- like it would be a responsible decision in my opinion to show it to my kids. Because even if my kids can't relate to certain aspects of the characters, there will be many aspects that they can relate to. Um, And it is because, like, in living in its ethnicity and in its class, ethnicity is plural, and its class, it is showcasing that, like, people are still people everywhere, (laughs) you know? There are fundamental things and fundamental themes in the lives of every human that li- that do transcend those things, those barriers that we have placed on ourselves. So, my kids are gonna watch. Also, it's great. The music is so damn good. The dance scenes are so fun. Still, like, yeah, no, it's so like it's so fun. Like, don't let this review like make make you forget how fun it is. Yeah. But yeah, like I think that they would eat it up. I'm wait- I would love a soundtrack if that can be commissioned. <laughs> like, that would be excellent. Somebody do a really dope Spotify playlist. Like, it's fantastic. Yeah. No, I, I agree. I would also love to show this to my kids. It's just so fun, um, especially if they are dancers. I feel like they'd really glom onto it if they like dancing. Um, even if they don't, <laughs> they will still watch it and enjoy it because, uh, I mean, why not? It's like, it's just a great, you know, it's just a great film all about women. Mm -hmm. or girls in this case um and you know I feel like it just has like such great lessons for you to pick up especially like the ones that Mrs. Bartlett like just like I feel like that fear of failure one is so important for kids to realize early and Disney I will say does try to show that quite a lot but I Mm -hmm. think this one is one of the most stark examples they have outside of Meet the Robinsons, which I think I've talked <laughs> about before how much I love that one. It's fantastic. Because um, they have a whole song about really failing. Um, but uh, but yes, I think this is one of the most stark examples. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think my only real criticism of this film is I do wish they had an Afro-Latinx person, like girl in it. I think that would have just added some more dimensions. But I'm also aware that in 2002, People weren't trying to act like that was a thing, <laughs> even though those folks have existed for years. So I think that would be my only, like, real critique of it, but that wouldn't stop me also, from showing it to... I don't know what the dance team looks like, though. What the what? The dance team? Yeah, no, and but, the dance, but then the again, dance team like, may have been... But you also have creative still, license. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's based on the thing, and they do that all the time anyway. Like, right. They're real quick to whitewash Whitewash. the shit out of somebody yeah it's just one of those things that i just think is like worth at least bringing up because i know a lot of afro latinx people say that they feel a lot of Mm -hmm. latinx representation is very whitewashed or very like Mm -hmm. tan washed so i get that i think like that would be like my only real critique of this film i would have loved if one of the girls was afro latina um but you know, even with that, still an amazing film. Would definitely recommend if you haven't rewatched it, please get on your Disney Plus and rewatch <laughs> yeah, that just immediately. It. It's gonna feel so good. You You're will gonna be love so it. happy when you do it. You will find yourself dancing and singing along mm-hmm. and being like, oh my god, young America Ferrera. Um, <laughs> So I definitely recommend it. We definitely say rewatch. This is like high rewatch factor on this one. All right, and I mm-hmm. think with that. We will catch you guys next week. And remember, yes, you can. Si se puede. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of The Critics' Kingdom. Don't forget to follow us on Spotify and SoundCloud so you can stay up to date. 
as well as interacting and letting us know what you guys think on social media. You can find us on Twitter at Critics Kingdom and on Instagram at The Critics Kingdom. We're excited to talk to you again next week.